وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to another episode from the Muslim family brought to you by Al-Madrasa al And in this episode, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to be talking about Birr al-Walidayn and salaf How did the early generations implement Birr al-Walidayn? And this is important because if you claim to follow the Salaf al-Salih and you claim that they are, you understand Islam the way that they understood it, so you have to look at how they understood concepts like this and how they implemented it. So you can understand what is meant by these ayat and the ahadith that we have heard of, you can contextualize it and, and understand how it should be implemented. And I'm going to start with an ayah uh, which relates to Ismail alayhi salam. And that is the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal in Surah Al-Safat. فَلَمَّا بَلَغَ مَعَهُ السَّعِيَ قَالَ يَا بُنَيَّ إِنِّي أَرَى فِي الْمَنَامِ أَنِّي أَذْبَحُكَ فَانْظُرْ مَاذَا تَرَى قَالَ يَا أَبَتِ تفعل مَا تُؤْمَرْ ستجدني إن شاء الله من الصابرين. And I brought this ayah here, even though the ayah relates to two prophets from the prophets of Allah. I brought it because it is an example of excellence in Birr al Walidain. And I brought it because it's an example that is, it's it's so amazing and so it's almost it's difficult for a person to even imagine or to even comprehend the sacrifice that Ismail was willing to make. And yet you see examples of sacrifice for Birr al-Walidayn among the Salaf, that you see that they truly understood from this ayah and from the ayat about Birr al-Walidayn and the ahadith about Birr al-Walidayn, they understood the real meaning of sacrifice and the real meaning of obedience to Allah and Birr al-Walidin. And that is that Ismail, when his father Ibrahim alayhim as when he saw in his dream and he said, my son, I've seen in a dream that I, I'm slaughtering you. I have seen in a dream that I'm slaughtering you. فَانْظُرْ مَاذَا تَرَى So what do you think? قَالَ يَا أَبَا تِفْعَلْ مَا تُؤْمَرْ He said, my father, do what you have been commanded. سَتَجِدُنِي إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ مِنَ الصَّابِرِينَ you will find me, inshallah, from the patient. So look at the obedience of Ismail to Allah Azza wa Jal, and look at his patience and look at his bir towards his father. Ya abat if'al ma tu'mar. My father, don't worry. Do what you have been commanded. You won't see anything from me except al-bir, except goodness and as-sabr and patience. That's all you're going to see from me. It's goodness. But I brought this ayah to show you, look at the bir of Ismail, how good he was to his father Ibrahim. Ya abatif al-ma tu'mar, satajiduni insha'Allah min al-sabirin. My father, do as you have been commanded. Obedience first to Allah. And you will not see anything from me. You will not find anything from me. Satajiduni. You, O my father, will find me insha'Allah to be among the patient. And that is why they call him Al-Ibn Al-Bar, the, the righteous child who was from the best of the people to his parents, Ismail alayhi salam. And this is just one example from the examples of the prophets alayhi salatu wasalam. But it sets the scene for what we're going to talk about. And that is a narration from Usayr ibn Jabir that he said, Kana Umar ibn Khattab radiyallahu an. إذا أتى عليه أمداد أهل اليمن سألهم أفيكم أويس بن عامر عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه When the people of Yemen would come to him, the delegations, the people in from, it's mentioned that they would come in the Hajj every year. Or perhaps uh, it could refer to the people who would come for other reasons in the army or whatever. But the people from Ahl Yemen, they would come every single year. And when they would come, every time Umar would say to the people of Yemen, Is there a man among you called Uwais ibn Amir? 
Is there a man among you called Uwais ibn Amr? Hatta ata ala Uwais faqala anta Uwais ibn Amr. Qala na'am. Until he came to that one day, one time, he found, they said, yeah, there's a, there is a, a man called Uwais ibn Amr who came with us. So Umar, he came to Uwais ibn Amr. Umar ibn Khattab. Who is Umar ibn Khattab? After all of the Sahaba, he is the, the second best of all of the Sahaba and the best of them after Abu Bakr radiallahu anhuma. And Umar is the one coming to him, looking for him. He says, are you Uwais ibn Amr? He said, yes. Then Umar, he said to him, min muradin thumma min qaran. Are you from Murad and then from Qaran? Are you Qarni, Uwais al-Qarni? Qala na'am. He said, yes. Qala, fakana bika barasun, fabara'ta minhu illa mawdi'a dirham. He said, was it the case that you had uh, this uh, disease of the skin? leprosy and you became cured from it except for the spot the size of a dirham he said yes he said do you have your mother and you 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 are your mother is alive and you look after your mother he said yes then umar he said radiyallahu an qala sami'tu rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul يأتي عليكم أويس بن عامر من أمداد أهل اليمن من مراد ثم من قرن. So there will come to you a man whose name is Uwais ibn Amr from the people of Ahlul Yemen, from the, the delegation who came with from the people of Yemen, from Murad and then from Qaran. And he'll be from the tribe of Qaran, will be Uwais al Qarni. كَانَ بِهِ بَرَسٌ فَبَرَأَ مِنْهُ إِلَّا مَوْضِعَ دِرْهَمْ He had this disease of the skin, so leprosy, and he became cured from it except for the space of a dirham. لَهُ وَالِدَةٌ هُوَ بِهَا بَرَّ And this is the shahid. He has his mother and he is bar to her. He is, he does بِرَّ الْوَالِدَيْنِ he does, he does great uh, he, dutifulness to his mother. لَوْ أَقْسَمَ عَلَى اللَّهِ لَأَبَرَّهِ If he swore to Allah for something to happen, Allah would make it happen. فَإِنِ اسْتَطَعْتَ أَنْ يَسْتَغْفِرَ لَكَ فَفْعَلْ He said, so if it's easy for you, for you to go to Uwais and ask him to ask Allah to forgive you, then do so. To make istighfar for you, then do so. La ilaha illallah. Subhanallah. For Umar ibn al-Khattab, and who is Umar ibn al-Khattab? For Umar ibn al-Khattab to go to Uwais al-Qarni and say, ask Allah to forgive me. Law aqsama ala Allahi la If he made an oath and he asked Allah for something to happen, Allah would make it happen. Then Umar, he said to him, فَاسْتَغْفِرْ لِي He said, ask Allah to forgive me. فاستغفر له. So Uwais asked Allah to forgive him. فَقَالَ لَهُ Umar, أَيْنَ تريد? Umar said to him, where are you heading to? قَالَ الْكُوفَةِ He said, I'm heading to Kufa. قَالَ أَلَا أَكْتُبُ لَكَ إِلَىٰ عَامِلِهَا He said, should I not write a letter to the governor of Kufa? Shall I not write a letter to the one who is appointed over Kufa that to make things easy for you, that whatever you want, you can have it, to look after you, to give you precedence? And Umar realized this is the best of the tabi'in. This is the one the Prophet ﷺ specified that if you're able to ask him to ask Allah to forgive you, then do so. He said, should I not? You know, the honor of this person, and he's from the unknown people. From the unknown people. He said, shall I not write a letter to send with you to the governor of Kufa? And remember, if Umar sends a letter, now the governor of Kufa is going to open the doors for Uwais al-Qarni. قَالَ أَكُونُ فِي غُبَرَاءِ النَّاسِ أَحَبُّ إِلَيْهِ He said, for me to be among the poor people is more beloved to me. For me just to be an unknown person among the poor people, I would prefer that. So he declined the offer of Umar 
uh, an, to send a letter to the governor of Kufa and he said, I would just rather be among the poor people. What made him the best of the generations after the Sahaba? The Prophet specified one thing, one thing, and that is the bir that he had towards his mother. SubhanAllah. And we, no doubt there are other things reported from him, his zuhud, his turning away from the dunya, his ibadah, his worship of Allah, some of the things that he said. But the thing that the Prophet highlighted is how good he was to his mother. And while we're talking about the tabi'een, Imam ibn Sirin, rahimahullah ta'ala, the great imam from the tabi'een, is said that when he was with his mother, the people thought that he was sick because of how meek he was and how quiet he was and how he would not even raise his eye to look at her, that the people would say to him that, are you sick? Because of the way that he, how he would behave in front of his mother. And it's narrated from Ibn Sirin that he wouldn't eat at the same time as his mother because he feared, he said, I fear that I would take something and eat it and she wanted to eat it. And Urwa, who is the nephew of Aisha radiallahu anha, Urwa ibn al-Zubayr, the son of al-Zubayr radiallahu anhu arda, he said, مَا بَرَّ أَبَوَيْهِ مَنْ مَدَّ إِلَيْهِ مَنْ نَظَرْ He said that the one who looks at his parents, and who basically looks at them for a long time or stares at them. This one has not done birr al-walidain. SubhanAllah, this is how the tabi'een understood it. Ibn Sirin didn't used to eat from the plate in case he took something that his mother wanted. Urwa said, looking at your parents, the one who stares at his parents, this one did not do birr al-walidain. Has not done birr al-walidain. They can't be considered to be bar, to be dutiful to their parents if they, if they even... Uh, they look at them for a long time and they don't lower their head in front of them and Muhammad ibn Munkadir Rahimullah ta'ala the great imam from the tabi'een he would put his cheek on the floor and he would say to his mother put your foot on my cheek rest your foot put your foot and rest it on my cheek. And it's narrated from the great Imam Muhammad ibn Munkadir rahimullah ta'ala from the Imamat of the Tabi'een that he said, Bata akhi yusalli wa bi'tu aghmizu qadama ummi. He said, my brother, when the evening came, the night came, my brother spent the night praying and I spent the night massaging the foot of my mother. Yaqul, wa ma uhibbu anna laylati bi laylati. He said, I would never wish to have exchanged what he did for what I did. SubhanAllah. I.e., I wouldn't, if he offered me to swap and said to me that you would have spent the night in prayer and I would have spent the night uh, looking after my mother's foot, he said that, the, that looking after his mother's foot was more beloved to him than Qiyamul Layl, than spending the whole night in prayer. And it's narrated from Ibrahim ibn Hashim. لما نزل جرير بن عبد الحميد الكوفي ببغداد على ابن المسيب فلما عبر إلى الجانب الشرقي جاء المد فقلت لأحمد بن حنبل تعبر said that Ibrahim ibn Hashim he said that when جرير ibn عبد الحميد الكوفي came to Baghdad and he crossed over to the الجانب الشرقي the eastern side the uh, the, the, the river or the Ja'al Mad, yani an Nahar. The river, it came, the, the flood came and it, it, the river became, uh, it became overflowing. So I said to Ahmed ibn Hanbal, Al Imam Ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala, Ta'bur, are you going to cross the river to visit this Shaykh of Hadith? Faqal, Ummi. لا تدعني. He said, my mother doesn't allow me to do it. And my mother doesn't give me permission to cross the river when it is full, when the, the mud comes, when it's overflowing. Al-Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah ta'ala, Imam from the Imma of Ahl-Sunnah, 
and he wouldn't cross the river for a hadith because his mother said to him that he wasn't allowed to go. The narrator, he said, فَعَبَرْتُ أَنَا He said, I, I went across by myself and I left Ahmed ibn Hanbal. Despite, despite how much Imam Ahmed wanted to go and to listen, to gain that hadith and that knowledge, he didn't cross the river because his mother didn't allow him. And it's narrated from Abu Bakr ibn Ayyash, uh, one of the Imams of the Sunnah, that he said, كُنْتُ مَعَ Mansur." He said, فَتَصِيحُ بِهِ أُمُّهُ وَكَانَتْ فَضَّةٌ عَلَيْهِ He said his mother, she was screaming at him and she was very hard and she was very harsh with him and she generally, and she, had, she, was, she was tough with him. She was tough and she was harsh with him and she was screaming at him. وَهُوَ وَاضِعٌ لَحِيَتَهُ عَلَى صَدْرِهِ مَا يَرْفَعُ طَرْفَهُ إِلَيْهَا And he put his, he was putting his beard in his chin, on his chest, and he never looked up at her. And she was shouting at him. An imam, imam from the imma of Ahl sunnah subhanallah, and the people turned to him, an imam from the imma of Ahl sunnah and his mother is screaming at him, and all he does is just lower his chin to his chest out of humility in front of his mother. And it's narrated about Labbar. Ista'dhana ummahu fi rihlati ila Qutayba. He had asked his mother permission to travel to Qutayba. Qutayba ibn Sa'id, the great scholar of hadith. To for talib al ilm to write the to write the hadith. فَلَمْ تَأْذَنْ لَهُ She didn't give him permission. فَجَلَسْ So he stayed where he was. ثُمَّ مَاتَتْ And then she passed away. فَخَرَجَ إِلَى خُرَسَان He travelled to Khurasan to reach Qutayba. And she's passed away. He waited with her until she died. When she died, Qutayba was still alive. So he travelled to Khurasan to meet Qutayba. ثُمَّ وَصَلَ بَلْخْ وَقَدْ مَاتَ قُتَيْبَ So when he reached Belkh, it, it, he realized or the news reached him that Qutayba had died before he could reach him. And then the people, they began to say, oh, you know, they began to make it like, say, feel sorry for him. That, oh, you, you couldn't go because of your mother. And then you, uh, you know, you traveled after she died, you traveled to Qutayba only to reach uh, a particular place and then to realize that Qutayba has also died. And he responded with a response that is, Yuktab bima'id dhahab. It deserves to be written in golden ink. He said, Hadihi thamaratul ilm. Inni akhtartu ridal walida. He said, This is the fruit of knowledge. I don't be, don't feel sorry for me. This is the fruit of knowledge. I chose the contentment of my mother. Subhanallah, look at the, 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 how the Salaf understood this. He said, you're saying sorry to me that I couldn't go and listen to hadith from Qutayba or I couldn't go and, and ask him a question or I couldn't go and write hadith from him. But I chose, this is why I got this knowledge. Why was I going to Qutayba for? I went to Qutayba to learn knowledge and I learned knowledge to act upon it. Hadith thamaratul ilm. The fruit of the knowledge is you act upon it. The fruit, what was the point of gathering all of these ahadith? Was I gathering all of these hadith so I could just say that I have more hadith than the other person? I was gathering them to act upon them. I deliberately chose the contentment of my mother. That was a choice based upon ilm. It was based upon knowledge. So don't feel sorry for me that I missed out on Qutayba and writing the hadith from Qutayba. Inni akhtartu walida. I deliberately chose for my mother to be happy with me because this is knowledge. Otherwise, what was the benefit in gathering all of those hadith? The benefit was to act upon them. And from the hadith that he gathered and he knew about, he said the knowledge that I gathered, it was, the, it was what made me choose my mother and to choose for my mother to be content with me. And he didn't go out. So he didn't get to seek that knowledge from Qutayba rahimahumallahu ta'ala. May Allah have mercy on them both. So this is just a glimpse at how the Salaf al-Salih understood Birr al-Walidi. And wallahi, we are in great, great need 
of going back and gathering these ayat, the ahadith on this topic and the fiqh of this topic and the stories and the narrations of the Salaf al-Salih on this topic and really asking ourselves where do we stand with regard to Birr al and I think that's a question all of us have to ask ourselves where do we stand in relation to that rather subhanallah these are people who they preferred their parents over the things which are from the most important of the mustahabbat like talibul ilm and we subhanallah perhaps disobey our parents in the things which are from the wajibat in the first place that we're supposed to do in the first place so we really really need to ask ourselves where do we stand with regard to this and we need to double our efforts so that we're not from those people who are gaining rewards from something but losing more on the other side from something else or from the people who become busy with al-mafdool the wasteful things or the things which are not so virtuous instead of al-fadil that which is virtuous and honorable so these are just a few uh, points that Allah has made easy for me to mention and in the next class inshallah ta'ala we're going to go on to a new segment which is going to deal with silatul rahim the keeping the ties with relatives and what that means and how we can do it. We will be leaving time for questions, inshallah ta'ala. If you do have questions, please email them to questions at amau.org and please put in the subject the Muslim family so that we know uh, that this, these questions relate to this particular uh, course. And inshallah ta'ala, at some point towards the end, perhaps after the course is finished, or at the end of the course, inshallah ta'ala, we will deal with the questions that people have, inshallah ta'ala, bi'idhnillah. We will try our very best to deal with the questions that are put forward. That's what Allah made easy for me to mention in this episode. And Allah is general's best. Wa salatu wa salam ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum. If you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running, make sure you head over to amauathome.com.